Hello, welcome to another episode of Learning the Drum. I'm your host, Adam Tevlin, and we're in week 16, episode 13. And I appreciate you watching. If this is your first time watching, by all means, go back to episode one so you can catch up with us. This is at your pace. There's no rush, no deadlines, and by all means, no scorecards or grades or anything like that. Welcome to the show. And we're gonna be doing a new rudiment today. And we talked about this last week and the mystery rudiment that we're gonna do is the double stroke roll. Really, uh, with my students, the first two rudiments that I teach them are the single stroke roll and the double stroke roll. I've waited a little bit into this because we're gonna be getting into some note values that's gonna allow us to do a double stroke roll. Uh, so to say. And the next rudiment that I teach after the single and double stroke roll is the flam. So one really good drummer actually is the oldest single owner drum shop of the United States. Mr. Fred Pierce once gave me some good advice while I was in high school because I was telling him, oh, I, I know the 26 rudiments, but now I have to learn the rest of them and, and the hybrids and, and all these crazy drum core warm ups. But he says, Adam, Listen, there's only three rudiments that are important, which is the single stroke roll, double stroke roll, and the flam. Any other rudiment outside of that is a combination of one of those three, or all of them. That made sense. So if you're good at the single stroke roll, you're good at the flams, and now the double stroke roll, the rest of the rudiments are going to be a little bit easier to do because remember we talked about last week that exponential value of it compiling on and, and it makes things a little bit easier to do if you know the other things before that. So anyway, without further ado, double stroke roll. What is the double stroke roll? Well, we know single stroke roll is one hit on each hand and the double stroke roll is, let's take a guess, two hits on each hand, that's right. Now, again, you could do it two ways. Uh, if you notice a lot of stuff that I've been doing in the rhythm exercises and things like that, I've been given controlled strokes and you could do it either way, whether it be free stroke or control stroke. I, I'll do it up, you know, in, in this position and that way you can see what it looks like. If you, if you decide to do it this way, that's fine. We'll run it this way and we'll run it the other way. Okay. Usually when I do it, I do it in a controlled stroke fashion. So let's do it that way. And you're going to see that fine line happen between the point of where it becomes a free stroke rather than a controlled stroke. Okay. So there's a fine line there. And so here we go. All right, so that's the open, closed, open method. You can also do it with a metronome and a magic number, maybe 60 beats per minute. Dial in the 16th notes. If you have to go slower, go slower, right? Okay, all right, and then also, you can practice it on a pillow. Yeah, usually when I practice on the pillow, it's like singles and doubles. That's what I usually use the pillow for, but you can play any rudiment on the pillow for that matter. But uh, I like the doubles and singles on the pillow. And so we're gonna bring the pillow out again. And you remember the magic hand clap, right? Yeah, we're gonna find out what the rhythm looks like here in just a sec. Here we go, one and two, and here we go, and, and two. Hey, okay, there we go. My crusty old pillow. Oh, uh, that's right, the drumsticks are underneath. Okay, there we go. Okay, so let's try to do this on the pillow. And once you got the movements down, right? All the way up, all the way down. And yes, this forces you to do controlled strokes, but noticing what's happening to my fingers. I'm utilizing my fingers. So you wanna make sure you're doing that. So let's just run it this way. I'll go open, close, open. You don't have to play with me. Just watch how that sounds. So.
Okay, this is a really good tool because why? It takes away the bounce of the drum and it makes you work twice as hard in half the time. And remember we were talking about with the single stroke roll that it's sometimes when it comes to speed, it really kind of matters about catching up or keeping up rather with the bounce of the drum and that opposite and equal reaction. So that's one way to do it is on the pillow. It's going to make you work twice as hard in half the amount of time. Okay. And I encourage you to do it. And if you got the movements down and you know how to do the rudiment, you can watch TV while you do this. Again, don't recommend all the hours, but if you're binge watching any program or whatever, um, and, and you want to kill some time while you're doing it, by all means, uh, have it in your lap and you can just work on that physical exercise because that's all it is, is a physical exercise, okay? Another way to play the double stroke roll on the pillow, and I see this a lot, is when they try to increase their speed on the, on the uh, regular drum, rather, they actually make that first stroke louder than the second. It sounds like something like this, right? So if you hear, or one hand louder than the, you know, if you hear that first stroke louder than the second, then that's, a, that's not good. You want to make sure that it's all open, not, okay, all open. One way to combat that is to accent the second stroke. Okay, so let's try that. So it'll be tap, snap, tap, snap, tap, snap, tap, snap, tap, snap. eventually kind of evens itself out right but that's one way to make sure everything's even even as possible okay this actually uh, the double stroke roll was the first rudiment that I've learned when I started playing the drums I was about 10 years old when I actually made that decision and I grabbed a, a, an empty ice cream gallon bucket and a pair of kite dowel rods and I broke the dowel rod in half to have two drumsticks and I went to my uncle Don and I said uh, Don teach me something on the drums because uh, he he played the drums and he was more of a self-taught player but he learned some things along the way and he says well this is how you hold the sticks so he showed me traditional and he grabbed that ice cream bucket and sat in between his legs and he says do this And when you have that mastered, come back to me and I'll teach you some more. There we go. Uh, and of course I couldn't master that. And I went on to grade school band two years later and learned under my band director, Jerry Oliver, who was third in the state of Missouri for rudimentary drummers and then went on to his pupil uh, who graduated from high school, uh, Dan. Because I had that little background with my uncle Don, when Dan had told me to play this on a pillow because he noticed my rolls were and I used to play my rolls like this right and that's kind of usually beginning band rolls as they kind of just you know and it's kind of a half between a buzz roll or a concert roll and a double stroke roll so after I got working on the pillow and I was about 13 at that time going to be 14 my muscles were of course developing different and uh, probably at a faster rate than what I would be as a kid so I don't usually pressure kids on trying to get this extremely fast at a young age but when they get into you know junior high high school this is where I start getting that uh, gentle push to making sure they can achieve greater speeds so that is the double stroke roll you can practice with the metronome you can practice it on a pillow uh, you can accent the second stroke you can practice it on the practice pad now try to get it at uh, 90 beats per minute and i'll go ahead and uh, get up to 90 here and you're going to see that it's not that fast right just get used to that Right? No big deal. With the pillow, without the pillow. Right? Okay. Try to get there by next week because we'll review it. Hopefully you get some time to practice in and I need to get rid of this pillow. So you want to do the clap one more time? Let's go. One, two, here we go. And, and, two, 
Hey, okay. Now let's get into study number six, and this is on page 18. We're coming up to a new concept, which is the dot after a note. And I don't know if you remember, but at the very beginning, um, when we were learning out of this book, the different music symbols, one of them was a dot after the note, which elongated or added value to the note itself or the original note. So in our case scenario number one, we have a dotted half note. So how many beats does a half note get? Do you remember? It gets two, right. And that dot adds half of the original value to that note. So that original value is the half note. What's half of a half note? What's half of a half dollar? That's right, a quarter, okay? So it adds an extra beat in 4-4 four, four time to that note. Not all the notes are gonna play out like that, but for right now, that's what's gonna happen, okay? So just remember that for a dotted note or any dot after a note just extends the value by half of the original value. And you can see at the end of each exercise, the last measure, I replace the dot with the equivalent uh, rest. So you can hear that there's really no difference. And again, if I was a flute player, you'll hear the difference. Here we go for number one. And we're gonna do that at 90 because we're dealing with quarter and half notes. So we'll just go ahead and leave it there. Get rid of the eighth note, two. Here we go. One, two, number one. Two, ready, play. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Good. All right, so you can see that that last measure and that third measure, the measure before the last measure, there's no difference there. All right, let's go for number two. We have, again, another dotted half note, which takes up beats one, two, and three. Okay, so here we go. One, two, here we go. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, no big deal. It's when we get up into the dotted quarter notes, as we can see in number three, so let's take that original value, okay? A dotted quarter note, what's the original value? The quarter note, okay? And what's half of a quarter note, if you remember? The two notes that would equal one quarter note. That's an eighth note, that's correct. So instead of the dotted half note taking up three beats, we're gonna have the dotted quarter note take up one and a half beats, okay? So the one, the and of one, and the downbeat of two. So that's three eighth note spaces. We're gonna take this slow, we're gonna to go to 60. Okay, we're gonna get back to 60 here. And we're gonna count, so make sure you count. And remember, the last measure, I replaced the dot with the equivalent rest. Here we go. Oops, eighth notes. One, two, one, and two, and ready, and play, and one, and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and okay what did you notice about that number three that's correct that is the same as number three on study number five, okay? And I just added the dot in there, all right? No big deal, okay? Hopefully you're getting hang of this. All right, now number four is our special hand clap, and that's why I wanted to make the pillow appear and disappear, okay? This is really just kind of a, an exercise at the very first episode. I wanted you folks to feel what it feels like to count you off and you execute a rhythm uh, with precision, okay? So number four is the actual rhythm of that hand clap. We're gonna go ahead and play it at 60. Two, one, and two, and here we go. And one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, right, right. <laughs> and three, and four, and left, and two, and three, and four, and there it is, right? Let's go on to number five, and we have the dotted quarter note on the downbeat of two. That means we're gonna come back in on the end of three. Usually I kind of play that, that downbeat before just to kind of make sure I you know, get that end of uh, three there. So here we go, number five. Two, 
One and two, number five and play. And one and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. And one and two, three and four. And one and two and three and four. And okay, good. All right, again, we're just going through one at a time. Uh, I encourage you to do the repeat, but we end up kind of running out of time almost. Without further ado, we're going to do number six, downbeat of two on the inside. One and two and number six and play. And one and two and three and four. 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 And very good. All right, so number seven. Down beat of four, felt on the inside. Here we go. Two, and here we go. And one, and two, and three, and four, 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 and. What did you notice about number seven? It is the same sound as number seven. And same thing with number eight. So that's right. All I did was I took the actual rest and I replaced it with a dot. So you can see those two different scenarios. And let's do uh, number eight without further ado. Two, one, and two, and here we go. And one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three and four and one and two and three and four and okay all right so that is study number six if that was too fast for you no problem slow it down push pause right I'll slow it down to 50 or 40 uh, however slow tempo you need just do it at that so that way um, you can really, really get this down. And I remember when I was first learning how to read and or rather actually learning how to count because I started reading and I didn't learn how to count until uh, a little bit later. Uh, but I, I had to go very slow, like one and two and three and four and, okay? Again, take it at your own pace. And that is study number six. Next week, we're going to be doing the double stroke roll, dialing in the eighth notes at 90 beats per minute. We're going to go and start at solo number two. So if you want to take a little peek ahead at what that's going to be, you're more than welcome to. Well, that's all we have for today. My name is Adam Tevlin. I'm your host on Learning to Drum. And always remember to keep swinging those sticks. We'll see you next week. Take care.